Why does Thomas Gaynor live so modestly? Gaynor's a really interesting guy. Gaynor is a very well-known investor who manages the investment portfolio at this big insurance company, Markel. And he lives in Virginia in a relatively modest townhouse. He drives a Toyota Prius. And, you know, I talked to him a lot about this whole issue of money, and he explained that he'd grown up Quaker and then later became Episcopalian, and he just has this very modest view of how he should live. He's very keen on giving money to, to charity, but he's, he's not a self-righteous, sort of sanctimonious guy. He said, you know, look, I, believe me, I'm not living like Mother Teresa. You know, so he's funny about this, but you really get the sense that he understands that money and flash possessions and the like are not really going to make him happy. Mm. And he's been married to the same person for, I think, 33 years. And he has three kids who he, said, he described to me as normal and enjoyable. And, <laughs> and he says, you know, he's just totally blessed. And, and I, I, one of the really interesting things to me, I asked, I asked pretty much everyone in the book that I interviewed about money and what money meant to them and what it had bought them and what it really didn't buy them. And, and Monish Pabrai again said to me that, that um, he agreed with Charlie Munger, who said that really what money buys you is independence. Mm. Uh, you know, the independence to say what you, what you think, to do what you think, not really to be a slave to anyone else. And I think that's a kind of profound idea. It's not really about the Ferraris and the Porsches and the Maseratis. You know, those toys are fine if that's what turns you on, but they provide pretty ephemeral pleasure. So I, I'm not trying to be moralistic about it, but, but there were certain people in the book who, like Gaynor, who were more modest and more philanthropic, for example, and they had a kind of glow to them. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly Gaynor did. There was a wonderful guy um, called John Spears, who I interviewed, who also you know, had this tremendous glow about him. And I, I, they tended to be people who weren't that flashy. They weren't that turned on by the private jets and stuff. I also think that if you're really motivated by the money, it, it's quite difficult to, to succeed over 30, 40, 50 years, because at a certain point, that the passion kind of wanes a little bit. Yeah. And so I think for some of these guys, the fact that they had a, an end beyond you know, private jets kind of really helped. And so Monish Pabrai, for example, I think he sent 196 kids to, to the Indian equivalent of MIT. Mm. And so he's really transforming these kids' lives. And he said, you know, when, when he gets to a point where He's, he's educated something like 15, 20,000 of these kids. He said, you know, we'll change the trajectory of India. And there's a tremendous sense of joyfulness to him when he talks about that. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like he's living in an impoverished way, but, but he'll often say that he, he'd like to be remembered for this charity, Dakshana, that he runs in India rather than, you know, for his hedge fund.